Almost half a million Australians are affected by an eye condition called Fuchs dystrophy. It can lead to blindness if left untreated. In the past, a corneal transplant was the only solution, but now a Sydney specialist has developed an alternative. As Tracy Bowden reports, it could be a game changer around the world. Down to Overlong. Yep. Nikolai Zaitsev and his wife Saskia are enthusiastic bike riders, but last year Nikolai's failing eyesight put that activity on hold. You have vision, but it's not clear. You can see the tree, but you can't see the leaves. Because the problem develops over time, you're, you're adapting and adapting and adapting, but if you look at over at any distance, yes, you've lost a lot of clarity. Nikolai has a relatively common eye disease called Fuchs dystrophy that affects one in every 25 Australians over 40. His world is becoming more and more blurry. In the future, I wouldn't be driving anymore, either voluntarily or by law. The optometrist would say, no, you can't drive anymore. What Fuchs dystrophy does is slowly cause protein to aggregate on the inner surface of the cornea. And if enough of that protein develops, more serious problems begin to occur with uh, swelling in the cornea and in the end, sometimes loss of vision in the eye. How are you, Nick? You feeling OK? Yes. Good man. This won't take long at all. Thanks. In the past, the only option would have been a complex procedure involving a corneal graft, requiring lifelong anti-rejection medication and the use of precious donated eye tissue. Today, Nikolai is undergoing a groundbreaking technique developed by Sydney ophthalmologist Greg Maloney. Not every case of fixed dystrophy will require a transplant tissue once that unhealthy protein has been removed. So the goal of today is to remove that protein and then we'll stimulate his own cells to heal uh, without the need for a graft. The procedure takes only six or seven minutes. The cornea with, where you can see the, the bad stuff we've stripped away and the centre no longer has that blocking the, um, the vision for Nick. Down the microscope it looks like we've made a window. This test, good. Well done Nick. So how important is it to find an alternative to having to do a transplant every time? I think if we can find any way to reduce or, or to find non-transplant options for patients with Fuchs dystrophy, the potential effect on our specialty could be, could be, could be enormous. Um, with uh, patients being taken off or out of the wait, transplant waiting list and that tissue going to somebody else who perhaps needs it more. At the moment there's probably 10 million people around the world who are waiting for a corneal transplant and only one in 70 are going to get it. Ophthalmologist Jared Sutton heads the New South Wales Eye Bank, which collects, stores and distributes donated corneas. He says the procedure could be a game changer in developing countries with limited supplies of eye tissue. Over 50% of the world's population don't have access to corneal transplantation. And so if we can have a technique or a surgical technique where we can treat the condition without the need for the cornea, then that's a, a real contribution. So it's definitely pioneering work. We, we recognise that and, uh, and the work that Greg's doing is recognised internationally. Hello, my name is Eric. I'm one of the nurses that will look after you this afternoon. And for the next 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna take off your dressing. We're gonna give it a clean. And then we're gonna put in the eye drops that the doctor has prescribed for you. And then we're gonna do an eye test, put in a lot of eye drops. And then we're gonna go see the doctor. Is that okay for you? Yes. yes. So whenever we are, um, taking off pads, doing cleaning, making sure that you are uh, cleaning your hands before you can get yourself these hand sanitizing gels from the shop or chemist or you can use water and soap to give it a clean before uh, touching the eye. Okay. So how's the brain? Good. 
So this is an eye shield. You will need to attach that over your uh, left eye for the next seven nights. So um, the pointy bit of this shield goes to the corner of your eyebrow and your nose. Mm -hmm. And you tape it with, um, you can use sticky tape or uh, dressing tapes that you can get from chemists or supermarket. Just make sure these holes are kept open so your eyes are able to ventilate. Okay. The purpose of this is to uh, prevent you from scratching the eye and also the dust and mites of the pillow to have direct contact with your eyes so that would delay your recovery. After um, each night, just wash it with um, dishwashing liquid over the sink and just air dry with it. Okay. okay. So at home you also need to clean your eye at least twice a day once in the morning and once in the evening or whenever you uh, came back from outside because mm -hmm. you want to remove all the foreign objects that's in the, around the eye area because they will delay your recovery. Okay. So you use uh, cooled bowl water to clean the eye. Um, first you boil the water, you put in a clean container, cool it off to room temperature and get yourself either these makeup removal pads or either you can use tissue, uh, fold it and then you dip it in the water and you clean only from nose to outside. Try to avoid back and forth and rubbing it with this. Just be nice and gentle. Brilliant. The um, other alternative is using uh, normal saline solution. And what size bottle should I use? Um, if you use uh, a big bottle, they only have a 24 hour life. So after 24 hours, it'll be no good, it'll be contaminated. And after um, you open that, it needs to be stored in the fridge. And the better way of this is using these, these single use ampules. So you twist the top open and then you put it on the um, cotton swabs or put it on a tissue paper and again fold it and then we clean from nose to outside parts of it. When you're cleaning the bottom eyelid, make sure you're looking up. And when you're cleaning the top, the upper eyelid, make sure you're looking down. And then we only again clean only from nose to outside. So like I said we fold it in half and try not to touch the area that is gonna contact your eye. And I'll have to close the eyes for me. Again, we clean from nose to outside, and then we discard it, and then we repeat the steps until your eye is uh, clean. After the procedure, just wash your hands, and make sure that the um, gunk and other foreign stuff doesn't stay on the hand. Okay. And then now we're going to put in the eye drops. I've got some here. Okay. They're in a chiller pack, like I was told. All right. Okay, first of all, you need to wash your hands. We don't want the germs to go travel from your fingers to the bottle and into your eyes because that's going to further delay your recovery. And just make sure when we remove the lid, we want to place it on a clean surface, such as a um, piece of tissue paper. So try to avoid to be having direct contact with um, surfaces. Okay. Yeah. With clean hands, we are pulling the lower eyelid. We create a little pocket, and for the pocket, and just look up the ceiling for me. Okay. And once it's done, just close the lid, and then store it in a cool, dry place, and then wash our hands again. Okay. So now we're going to put in the second eye drop and they need to have a three to five minute gap in between because we don't want to make a mayonnaise in your eye. Okay. 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 Alright. Okay, again same rules apply. First rule is? Wash your hands. That's right. And then our lids are placed onto? A clean surface like a tissue. Like a tissue. Yes. And then Again, I'd like you to look up the ceiling for me. This is cool. Perfect. Just close your eyes and keep it closed for a minute. So that will keep the eye drop inside the orbital area. 
it's that's very important if you have any new redness new pain new sensitivity to light or sudden decrease in vision please make sure you call your ophthalmologist um, rooms or you, you present yourself to the eye hospital emergency department Real. okay Thank you for being today with us. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions about the process for the procedure. It had deteriorated to the point that I couldn't see at all. It could see shadows and things like that, but I wasn't seeing any real vision. I'd, it was shadowing, it was not precise, it was very upsetting. With this procedure, uh, one of the things people usually ask us is that the time of recovery is may, might take longer than, than, than when you have a graft. You have done both procedures. Yes. Desmatorexis without a graft on your left eye and with a graft on your right eye. Correct. How, how was your perception of the, of the recovery time? The, the graft was faster in the sense that within 14 days I was all right and could see better. But I had to be careful, you can't do things, you know, I have to be, uh, play sport and they told me not to do sport until it was all over four weeks later. This left eye, which has now been operated, uh, I was expecting a recovery of around about three to four weeks. It was improving from day one, all the time. Virtually, well, after three weeks, I was starting to see very well. Four weeks, really, really good. And from now on, the last two months, I really, you know, have really good vision developing. So I'm very, very happy with the results. Okay, so, yeah, by, by, and basically, that will be my last question. How do you feel your vision is right now? Very good, very good. Uh, I could joke that I'm having a vision of a young man again, and I'm sorry, I'm an old man now. <laughs> That's really very important for me so now that you've had that you've gone under the both procedures that you if you had this option again to choose what would you prefer I would prefer what happened to me now the actual operation we had simply because it makes a lot of sense not to have a graft if because as always I understand there is still a rejection possibility not necessarily it can happen with eyes but there is always a possibility and I still have to put drops in here every day whereas this one is perfect nothing happens anymore I don't put drops in anymore it's like a proper eye I always had so I'm very happy about that result and I would always prefer the operation that Hollow Maloney did it's now about two months since the procedure and Nikolai's vision continues to improve. How are you going? Um, it's very good. Um, it's so good I'm looking at doing the next, uh, already starting the schedule to do the surgery on the next eye. Yeah, life is, you know, just that much clearer as you go.